What's up, people? This is my Triumph 2020 Street Triple RS. And uh, I just wanted to make a quick video about all the mods I did, the things I've adjusted on this bike. Um, in the eight months I've had it, I had a bunch of people come up to me on the street, just chit chat about what they've done to their strip, Street Triple. And, uh, and I just want to share what I've done with mine. Uh, so I'll run through what I've done, everything I've added, talk about installation process and costs. And whether I ultimately think each mod is worth the money, uh, comment below if you agree or disagree. All right, so let's get right into it. We'll start with the aesthetics first. Uh, the first thing I'll talk about is the uh, fly screen. Uh, it's made by Triumph. It has a little smoke screen, a little bit tinted. It costs about $60 or so. And to me, it just completes the look of the bike. And it isn't as bulky as some of the aftermar aftermarket options you see. It's a sleek design and it fits the contours of the bike pretty much perfectly for me. In terms of wind protection, I can't really comment since I've never ridden without it, but I imagine its effects are pretty minimal, uh, which is why I put this on the aesthetics category. And at the end of the day, it's a naked bike, so you know, you're used to some level of wind blast. And as far as that installation, it came out of the dealership with this fitted, so I can't comment on that either, but can't imagine it's very difficult to pop on. All right, the next mod under the aesthetics category are these LED indicators uh, put on both front and back. Uh, they're OEM parts, but they're not available in the US. Uh, I had to order them from some eBay distributor from London, I believe, and they were a pretty penny, north of 250 for both front and back, I believe. Um, there are two options. One is a scrolling indicator, which I have, and the regular, which is blinks all blinks at the same time. I decided to go with the OEM over something like Rizomas because I didn't want to worry about compatibility and fit. And with these, I just knew they were going to fit perfectly, and, and they do. It's pretty much plug and play. You don't need a relay, um, at least on the 2020 RS model. Uh, I've read on the forums this varies uh, in the R variant and other model years, but don't quote me on that. But anyways, they're a huge improvement from the bulky OEM plastic indicators. Um, they look to be solidly made and they are super bright. You might not be able to notice in the video here, but I can tell you for sure that they're super visible in all light conditions. And uh, most importantly, they just, they just look better. The OEM indicators on the US models kind of stick out like a sore thumb and they feel cheap. And uh, these just feel like a quality product. Uh, installation was annoying, but not difficult. I would say I'm moderately handy and it took me a couple of hours. Um, so are they pricey? Yes. Are they worth it? I think so. All right, the last mod under the aesthetics category is this tail tidy from Evo Tech Performance. Uh, this is about 150 US dollars and I'll just go ahead and say this is absolutely worth it. Um, installation was a breeze and it completely transforms the rear view of the bike. Um, if you're going to do both the tail tidy indi indicators, I suggest you do it all at once. You can just kill two birds with one stone here. All right, the next category we're gonna talk about is protection. Um, the first thing up are the frame sliders and I went with the OEM frame sliders here just cause I think they match the overall look of the bike and you almost can't tell they're an additional part. Um, this was also installed by the dealer, so I can't comment on that process, but it doesn't look too complicated. Um, fortunately for me, I can't tell you if this works or not. I dropped the bike twice at pretty low speeds and the frame sliders never touched the ground. So is it worth it? Maybe. You could probably make a case for it if you frequent the track. So you can make a decision on uh, whether you need these based on your needs. All right, so we also have OEM parts for the engine covers too. Um, again, I think they match the overall look of the bike and they don't scream aftermarket. Uh, they look plastic, but they're pretty strong in uh, the way they're constructed. I think they're made from injection molded nylon. Uh, they're about 120 bucks and installation was super easy. And uh, unfortunately, I have put these covers to the test. Uh, thank God they were at low speeds. But um, when I picked the bike back up, I saw that they took the brunt of the damage and the cases underneath were completely fine. Uh, you know, no one wants leaking cases on the track or on the street, so worth it. 
All right, next up under the protection category are the front fork protectors. Again, these are OEM parts, super easy to ins install and they cost about 50 bucks. Um, they might be more useful in more violent crashes, but in the two times that I fell, these things never hit the ground. Um, the bar or the, the mirror always touch first on the front end. I'd say these are worth it only because of the low cost and you can never have too much protection. Next up, we have the Evotech sliders and swing arm spools. And I got both of these, but I don't think both are necessary. And I'll tell you why. Uh, in the two spills that I've had, the swing arm spools and not the rear sliders actually took all the damage and they did a great job. Uh, they're only 30 bucks and they work well with any spool style rear stand. Uh, so definitely worth it. Takes less than five minutes to install. Uh, and again, I think we could do it without the rear axle sliders here. Uh, the next thing here is the radiator guard from Evo Tech. Um, I'm going to say it's worth it at the price of 70 bucks. I can't say for sure, but why not? Especially if you do a good amount of group rides or uh, ride on roads with a lot of debris. It's barely noticeable and fits pretty snug and quality construction as always from EvoTech. All right, the next category, I'm just gonna lump into other accessories. And the first thing is um, the Easy Grip Pro tank pads. And from an aesthetic standpoint, I wish I didn't need them because uh, it looks a lot better with the paint is exposed in my opinion. But I just needed that extra grip for hard braking and to keep unnecessary pressure off the handlebars and I think it does the job pretty well. These were about 40 bucks and uh, pretty easy to install. Uh, make sure you heat the pads with a hair dryer or something if you're in a cold um, environment so that it heats the works properly. And to me it's worth it, but you can decide based on what your needs and wants are. The other part in the other accessories category is the Bluetooth um, module. And uh, Triumph recently revealed this new My Triumph platform that is supposed to seamlessly connect your TFT display with your various gadgets. Uh, you know, everything from your phone to music, navigation, um, and your GoPro or Senna. But I was disappointed that the module itself doesn't come stock. It costs over 200 bucks for the module itself. Uh, and it's more if you pay for the installation. But the worst part is that the platform itself is, is not good. It doesn't support any of the newer devices, including the newest iPhone or the GoPro or your headsets. Um, it's just, why, why would you put this on a 2020 model bike? It, that doesn't make sense to me. Lastly, the onboard navigation is, is just horrible. The text is so small, you can barely read it. Uh, the last thing you wanna do, obviously, is squint at your screen when you should be paying attention to the road. And on top of that, the street names are just messed up. They, I don't know the story here, but they just don't come up correctly. I notified Triumph of all these issues and they just shrugged their shoulders and say, said they were working on it. And as much as I want to like the Bluetooth module, Triumph has a lot to do, uh, a lot of work to do here before it's usable. Not worth it. If you do decide to get this and install it yourself, I can tell you that it is a bitch to install. It's the little module right next to the battery there. Um, and if you have larger hands like mine, you just don't have it, a lot of room to maneuver there. So another reason why it's not worth it. Now for the fun part, which is performance. Um, we'll start off by talking about exhaust. You know, stock, it came with a pretty good looking exhaust with the carbon fiber tip. And it sounded pretty good, had your classic triple sound, but it was just missing a little bit of oomph. So I went back and forth between the SC Project S1 and SC1R, and ultimately decided to go with the SC1R here, because I heard the S1 in person, and it was just, it was just too loud. It sounds good, but just too loud. Um, the SC1R is just a touch below that, and it sounds incredible. It has a deep rumble and it screams at high RPMs and it's just an improvement in overall sound. Installation was pretty simple, but I could not take the baffle out if my life had depended on it. Obviously you can't plant it on the ground and hammer away because of the carbon tip, 
I need the help of three large men to eventually hammer this thing out. Uh, two men holding it, one man, one man hammering it from the other side. Uh, shout out to AJ Cycles in New York for helping me out. Cost was about 900 bucks, but worth every penny. Here's what it sounds like. Next in the performance category is the Sprint P08 air filter. This is a no doubter for me. For 100 bucks, you get a sick in town intake sound, improved airflow, and uh, more power. Plus, this particular filter requires no oil treatments, and you can wash it and reuse it. Installation was a pain. Uh, you can do it yourself, uh, but you probably have to remove the entire tank. It's much easier if you have a second man to hold the tank while you access the airbox. Next in the performance category is the ECU tune. And uh, with Euro 5 emission standards as strict as, as they are now, uh, these bikes come out of the lot super lean. Throw a high flow air filter and an exhaust on there and now you're running even leaner. Um, I considered piggyback systems like your Power Commanders and Rapid Bikes, but ultimately decided against it. You can make your own decision here, but I'm not a fan of piggyback systems. Um, but whatever route you choose, you're going to need your uh, need to adjust your air fuel ratios if you add performance mods uh, to an already lean bike. So I had some trouble finding someone who that can uh, tune the 2020 models, but eventually found DNK Tuneworks out of Virginia. Uh, don't worry if you're not in the DMV area, you can either send your ECU in or go to another shop that has a partnership with DNK. Or if you have an Android device, you can upload the map yourself using Tune ECU and the appropriate Bluetooth dongle. But uh, I went ahead and uh, went to AJ Cycles in, uh, in New York to avoid any headache. Uh, and uh, I was a little skeptical at first, and if you scour the forums, you'll probably find people saying that it's impossible to tune these 2020 models, but I can tell you uh, with absolute certainty that this tune is legit. It absolutely brought the bike to life and I had noticeable gains in low-end torque and overall power without losing too much of this smoothness. Um, the max RPM was also increased and limiters were removed. I believe the tune itself was around 250 bucks and it is worth it. I might even say it's necessary if you throw on an exhaust air filter. The last mod I'll talk about is the single most important thing you can do to your bike in my opinion and that is suspension tuning. The bike comes with fully adjustable shocks and you should take advantage of that. Uh, once you get it set to your style of riding and your body weight, it completely transforms the way your bike rides and handles. Uh, for under a hundred bucks completely worth it. Well that wraps up the video. I hope you found the video informative. Um, comment below what you did to your street triple and uh, if you have any questions for me. Thanks for watching.